I decided to try living like Emily Dickinson, who was my favourite poet, for a day. She was a recluse and wrote over 1,000 poems in her lifetime, and she wrote all of it from her family home bedroom, mainly at a tiny desk looking out over her garden in Amherst, Massachusetts. Tomorrow I am going to try her writing habits, routines, and just daily rhythms, and I genuinely just can't wait. So I suppose I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Alright, so I was lying. It's not bright and early, it's just plain early. Emily Dickinson would wake up in the middle of the night to write because she could avoid distraction and she could completely focus on writing her poetry. I'm so tired. Currently 10 past 2. Currently 10 past 2. And I am going to do some writing. I did end up doing this twice. Once where I didn't film and once where I did film. Just because the camera would have been a distraction which eliminates the whole point of writing without distraction. Now, my thoughts, I enjoyed the sense of quiet um, but I think there's a difference between writing in the early morning and writing in the middle of the night because I knew I was about to go back to sleep it was more of an in-between time as opposed to the beginning of the day and as a result I just didn't have energy or focus. I did end up writing one poem though and funnily enough when I read it the next day I couldn't remember what I'd written um, and I think it's because I was in that really hazy half asleep mindset but I didn't think the poem was terrible. I'd recommend trying this. You end up writing something that isn't necessarily typical of your normal style. Anyway, I finished up with that poem and I went back to sleep because I was very tired. Now here we are the next morning, it's around 7.30 that I woke up and I wasn't actually that tired from, from writing early in the morning, but to be fair, I didn't stay up for too long. First I opened the window and I listened to the bird song, Emily Dickinson loved birds and so this just felt like a very fitting way to start the morning. She mentions birds a lot in her poetry and one of my favourites is the doomed regard the sunrise and she writes, the man to die tomorrow harks for the meadow bird because its music stirs the axe that clamours for his head. Now the next thing I did was make my bed and I don't know if this is in Emily Dickinson fashion to be honest but I just didn't want to leave it unmade. I know that she wasn't too fond of chores though. Then I got this bowl and jug which I filled up with water I was going to use as a wash basin. Dickinson did have a wash basin in her bedroom which she'd used to wash as was characteristic of the period. I used to use one of these every day when I was in sixth form. So next, um, please do excuse the use of my iPad, but um, I wanted to find some calisthenetic exercises to do so this is a schedule which was from her time at Mount Holyoke which was a female school which Dickinson started out when she was 17 and she says that she practices calisthenetics for a quarter of an hour this was thought to be very good exercise for women because it wouldn't affect your capacity to bear children next i decided what to wear so there is a lot of mythology around emily dickinson and her white dress it is true that she had a white dress and i saw this white dress when i visited amherst last year um this is it in all of its glory it's one of the only items of clothing of dickinson's which does remain 
and Mabel Loomis Todd wrote about Dickinson uh, that she is a lady whom the people call the myth. She dresses wholly in white and her mind is said to be perfectly wonderful. Now I didn't have a perfectly white dress which wasn't a height of summer dress so I settled on this beige dress with and I put my hair into a low bun which is what we see her wearing in the only photograph that we have of her. was known for her bread. She was an excellent baker and would bake the bread every day for her family. She actually wrote this excellent poem where she spoke about bringing twinned loaves into the world, which is really lovely. And she actually won a competition for her bread, a local competition. It was for her rye and something bread. It was like a grain bread. And for this video, I was going to try my hand at making bread. It's something I want to be able to do and something I want to practice, but I'm not particularly good. So instead, I went to a local bakery and I bought a loaf, which is more akin to the kind of thing that Emily Dickinson would have been able to make. Because my sorry attempt would definitely not have been an apt breakfast for her. So I've got some bread and butter and jam. We ran out of butter, so I had to go half jam. Whilst I'm eating, I'm going to read some of the let. I have read this, but not for years, so I'm just gonna reread the first chapter because Dickinson loved the Brontes and what they represented. I mean, they were new and scandalous and controversial. She was very interested and involved in the literary landscape and she was reading new authors, which is really, really cool. Bronte and bread. I mean, there isn't really a better way to start a morning. I definitely approve. Then I quickly did the washing up and I went round and watered the plants. I don't usually do this. My mum usually does this. But Emily Dickinson was a very keen gardener. Her father actually built her a greenhouse, which was adjacent to his studies. So she walked through the study to get to the greenhouse and this is it in all of its glory, um, which I saw when, again, I was in Amherst. It's beautiful and she would grow um, fragrant flowers in here whose scent would drift into the rest of the house. And often include, she also often included flowers in her letters. She'd press them. In the spring, I really hope to start tending to plants but we don't have a greenhouse and nothing's growing really at the moment so I just watered the house plants. Next I went outside to do some writing. Emily Dickinson would write whenever she could and she actually had an apple tree in her garden which had a seat in it a little bit like a tree house where she would sit and write and um so I don't have a seat in a tree but we do have a tree house from when we were younger so I took a notebook up into the treehouse and I sat and wrote there outside and it was so beautiful and such a great space to write. Oh, and then I went inside to do some more writing, but actually this wasn't by hand, this wasn't in Dickinson fashion. I just wanted to work on my book for a little bit. So Emily Dickinson prioritised writing, prioritised writing the work that was important to her at that moment. This is a project which is important to me at the moment, so um, I do think it's fitting still. That's just me making excuses. I really just wanted to write. <laughs> And this day I had booked to go out with my mum and our friend Serena. We went for brunch, which was really lovely. Again, with the mythology around Emily Dickinson being a total recluse, she was quite isolated, but in her 20s, she would still travel around New England with people. She visited Boston for her eye surgery as well. And even when she withdrew from society, she still 
did spend time with people, she still had vibrant connections with people. Um, then, of course, we spent some time in a bookshop. It was quite unusual at the time for this to be the case, but Dickinson's father, Edward, was very supportive of his daughter's reading and any book that they requested, he would get for them. He didn't always support the material that they requested, for example, the Brontes, but um, he did oblige. Oh, and I kept a notebook in my pocket at all times. Dickinson's dress did have pockets. There's obviously this ongoing joke about female clothing not having pockets. Certainly the case back in the uh, late 1800s as well. But Dickinson's dress did have pockets, which meant that she could put paper and pencil and travel with her writing implements wherever she went. Whilst I was out, I did make some jottings and write down a few notes. Oh, and can we just appreciate how beautiful the blossom is looking? These are the first, these are really are the first signs of spring. It's a weird plant. Yeah. This is a witch hazel, Serena's just been telling us. It's not at its best. It looked better last week. It's beautiful still though. I know. It's just so unique. It's just the most bizarre looking thing. When I got back, I made myself some tea. I'm so tired. I'm now going to write a letter to a friend, Emily Dickinson, wrote hundreds, thousands of letters during her life, um, and she was very involved in her local community. She wrote to people um, far away that she actually had never met, and letters, many scholars argue, were her main form of connecting with people. So I've got tea all over my desk. So I'm going to write a letter to a friend of mine who lives in America and uh, then I will walk to the post box to post that. office to post my letter but I might have to turn back if it starts getting too dark. You know what, I don't actually think it's a good idea for me to go on a walk. I think it's going to get dark while I'm out. I did end up coming out on a walk, but I've taken a different route. Emily Dickinson did love being in nature. They actually, on their land, owned a massive meadow. Honestly, this is not different from my daily routine at all. I always go on a walk and I always feel good for going on a walk. But yes, not walking to the post office. So Emily Dickinson had this massive book where she kept her work as a naturalist. So she pressed and labelled these flowers here, as you can see. But I believe she also did botanical drawings. Maybe I'm mistaken there because I can't seem to find anything. Hmm, I was just about to try botanical drawing for the last thing today. But I might be wrong. It might be that she only pressed flowers. In which case, I am definitely going to start that this year. 
find a really nice notebook and then create pages of it. Oh my gosh, actually, I should make a note of that so I don't forget. And then I went to sleep, I got into bed and I read some more of that. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, obviously I didn't follow her routine exactly. We don't have an exact routine for Dickinson, but I tried to live inspired by her for a day. And um, I hope that you learned something watching this as well. And I hope that you have more than just a productive week.